And you should always end with an a or the handle. And of course, I sh you know four, and then oh, I'm all bunched up. Hello and welcome to Just Vintage Crochet and today we are going back to the 80s with this 1980s beach duffel bag or gym duffel bag or just anything duffel bag. And of course, you can change the colors on this. We do, we will be adding a zipper, but that's optional if you don't want to add a zipper. I did order some zipper from Amazon, so it's coming. Uh, I've never added zipper to anything before, so this will be my first time. Much like the embroidery with the baby poncho, it's gonna be my first time adding zipper to anything. Um, but I went with the colors in the photo because I want an 80s duffel bag. I do. So the hardest color I, I had to track down was this like neon highlighter day glow yellowy green. But I found some on Amazon. I'm going to leave a link down below for it. It is from Plymouth Yarns Encore. This is a actually an acrylic wool blend. Right here it says 75% acrylic, 25% wool. So you only need one of these. Here's everything on the back of the pattern that we need. Two, it says that we need two skeins of this one. I only have one, but I'm hoping one is enough because their skeins were smaller then than they are now. So I'm hoping this will be enough. If not, I can pick this up at my local Walmart where I got it from. Um, two ounces each of orange and tangerine, so you don't even need full skeins for that. And I do have, I don't have, um, what does it say, orange and tangerine, so I'm using, I don't have, I mean that sounds like the same color to me, so I'm going to use gold, because to me this looks kind of gold, and I'm also going to use this like day glow orange that I have. And that's, this is all Red Heart Super Saver, by the way. And the orange that I have is literally called Traffic Cone Orange. And the gold is just called gold. This one here is called Turqua. It's like turquoise and aqua. And then this one is called, well, it's just 476, but I'm gonna leave a link direct to this color in the description box down below. Again, it's not affiliated. It's literally the Amazon link I use to buy mine. All right, here we go. We're gonna make a duffel bag and hopefully a bunny will be inside of it by the time we're done, yeah? I'm just kidding. Okay, so it says we start with our green and we're going to chain 79. Oh, I guess I forgot to tell you that we're using a J six millimeter hook. I'm really sorry. So let's chain 79. I'll be right back. Okay, my 79 chains. Now for row one, single crochet in second chain from the hook and in each chain across within last stitch. Then we're gonna change colors after that. So we chain 79, but we're gonna work 78 single crochet. There we go. And of course I always work in the back bumps. That's just where I live. So I will be back when we get down to the end and we are ready to change color. I think we're gonna change to the turquoise. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it said that this bag is 18 inches long. So it looks like we're gonna, it looks like the whole thing is worked in single crochet. Oh, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do that too. That might be why we need two things of turquoise. I'm probably gonna have to go to the store and get another thing of turquoise. Anyways, I'll be back whenever it's time to change color. So I have one stitch unre unworked and that's the stitch I'm gonna change my color with. So we go in, we start the single crochet and then we stop. There we go. Add the turquoise or turqua. And complete the single crochet with the new color chain one and it says to work single crochets basically i think for like 13 rows we're just going to work straight up single crochet just like this second row for stitch work 13 more so we're going to work 14 rows of turquoise 
So this is row one of the turquoise row. Okay, I will be right back. Okay, so I just wanted to jump on here real quick to let you know that I am yarning under instead of over for a tighter stitch, you know, the amigurumi stitch. So I am yarning under, because this is a duffel bag, I want the stitch to be tighter, so I'm yarning under. Here's how it looks yarning over. I'll show you the difference and why I would recommend yarning under. So you can see right off the bat the difference yarn under yarn over these are big loose stitches and i did not change my tension i'm being very fair with this and then here's the tighter yarn under stitches so yeah i would recommend just yarning under as this is you know it's a duffel bag so there you go Okay, I just wanted to pop on real quick to tell you that. You could you could do this however you want, but it would be my recommendation since we are making a duffel bag. Now, it does say that this is meant to be 18 inches. This might bring us down just a little bit, like 17 and a half or even 17 inches, but that's okay because we'll have a tighter weave. All right. There we go. So we have our 14 rows of turquoise or turqua. And we're going to change color again. So I left my last stitch unworked. This is where we're going to color change. Start your single crochet and then stop and finish your single crochet with the green or this like neon highlighter yellowy green. And we're going to work four rows of the green. There we go. And it's just straight single crochet again. I think the whole thing, other than the very ends, is made in just straight single crochet with no increases. I think. I haven't really looked over the entire pattern. So there we go. We're going to work four rows of this color here, this green. I'll be right back. Okay, time to switch colors again. This is our four rows of the green, so I haven't worked my last stitch yet. Start that, finish it with the turquoise. So we're gonna do two more rows of the turquoise. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and weave in all these tails, kind of catch up on that a little bit but just two straight rows of turquoise. And then we're gonna change color again. So I will be right back. I'm gonna sew in all my tails and work in these two rows of turquoise. There we go. Okay, ends are all sewn in and it's time to change color again. It calls for orange, but bear in mind, we have orange and tangerine in this pattern. And their orange, while in real life, was probably very nice orange. To me, it looks gold. I like the way it looks as a gold. So that's why I'm going with gold. So we're going to do four rows of orange or gold. And then the brighter orange that they call tangerine is going to be used in the middle portion there. So we'll start our last single crochet. I got a little ahead of myself there a second ago. And then I'm gonna attach the gold in place of the orange. And we're gonna work four rows of the gold or orange. There we go. Okay, so just work four rows of this color, whichever color at this point that you've chosen. And I will be right back. Okay, got my four rows of the gold done, or in the pattern they call it the orange. Now we're gonna change color again, but I've got a little bit of homework for you. We're gonna do two rows of the turquoise, and then 10 rows of the, what they're calling the tangerine, but I am using traffic cone orange okay 
Okay, so two rows of this turquoise. Then you will change color again and work 10 rows of orange, orange. Okay, I will be back whenever we get pretty much done with the 10 rows of orange. I'm gonna weave in all of my ends. I will see you then. There we go. Okay, so I'm all done with my 10 rows of bright orange and it is totally stressing out my camera's white balance. Like, wow. Uh, but I have some homework for you now. You really don't need me to get on here and show you row by row what to do next, or not row by row, but section by section what to do next because what you need to do is everything you just did here minus the bright orange. So actually what you need to do is everything from here on down to here, including this row of green. You're just going to be working it going up this way, okay? So you're going to work the two rows of teal, four rows of the color you chose for here. I chose gold, two rows of teal, four rows of green, then the 14 rows of teal followed by one final row of green. So just mirror, out, not the orange, the orange is the middle of the bag. Here, let me show you. See, we're just doing everything over again and that is exactly what is indicated in the pattern here. Uh, we now worked, okay, two rows of turquoise, 10 rows of tangerine. Now we're going to do two rows of turquoise, four of orange, two of turquoise, four rows of green, 14 turquoise, and one row of green. So we're just copying outside of the orange everything that we did right here. Very, very easy. So just go ahead and do that and come on back and then we are going to start to work the end circles right here, these end pieces, and then we will do the handle, okay? Okay, now let's move on to the round ends. Now, when you make these, they're going to appear to be way too small for the bag, but it will all work out in the end, okay? So let's go ahead. I'm just gonna show you how to make this because I've already made both of them. It's really, truly that easy, especially if you've ever worked in the round before. So here we go. Recommends that you start with a chain two and work six single crochet into the center of the, or into the first chain of the chain two. I'm actually going to work a magic circle. So you can work a magic circle or you can chain two and in your first chain, make six single crochet. I'm just gonna go ahead and make six single crochet into this ring here. At this end, we will be working in a continuous round so you will need some kind of a stitch marker and into your first uh, single crochet that you made, work two single crochet. Mark your first single crochet as the beginning of your round. So there's two single crochet, and here's the second single crochet, here's the first one. Mark that first one as that marks the first stitch of your next new round. And work two single crochet into every stitch around. We are looking for a total of 12 single crochet. Did I miss one? Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I'll be right back. Now for this next round and every round after. The stitch where you have your stitch marker marks your first stitch. You're gonna put two single crochet into that stitch on every round. You're gonna start with an increase. One and two, and again, this is the second single crochet you made. Here's your first one. And that is the beginning of your next new round right here. That's where you're gonna put two stitches in the next go around. So, we just put an increase into our first stitch. The next stitch over only gets one single crochet. The next stitch after that gets an increase of two single crochet into the same stitch. Next stitch over, sorry, I almost said go around. I don't know why. <laughs> one single crochet. After that, you get an increase. One, two, one single crochet. And I like to have a little cadence in my head. It helps. So I will go in, 
increase one in crease one in crease I never end with an increase because we start every round with an increase so I'll put one single crochet there now the next round up we start with an increase right where our stitch marker is so we go in crease and then that first stitch gets the stitch marker and then we put two one single crochet into each of the next two single crochets so that's one two next stitch over is in crease then it's one next stitch over two next stitch over in crease one two in crease i know it sounds silly but it does help to have a little cadence in your head so that you're not hyper focused on counting as long as you keep the cadence going it it almost works itself out so this round we're working two single crochet between the increases the next round up we will have three single crochet between the increases then we will have four single crochet between the increases every row we're going to increase by another stitch between the increases do this until you have 10 stitches between the increases then switch to green and do one round in green with 11 stitches between the increases here's an increase and here's an increase one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven okay once you have worked all the way up to 11 stitches between the increases which is your green round cut and weave in your ends you're done go ahead and make another circle and these work up really fast by the way i made both of mine in like 20 minutes really really fast so okay make up both of your ends and then we will move on to the handles so for the handles now i'm gonna show you something i personally like to do i do this anytime i'm gonna make a handle um that's with kind of a weaker yarn now this here is a an acrylic and wool blend and it's kind of soft and squishy and it's a bit stretchy so just to aid it along i don't do this with every single handle i make but in cases like this where my yarn happens to be a bit you know bouncy and stringy I will add one strand of number 10 crochet cotton thread to it. It doesn't necessarily change the size too much, but it adds some, hear it? It adds some toughness, which you're gonna need because this is handles for a duffel bag of all things. You could be carrying gym clothes and shoes in there, stuff that's heavy. So the pattern wants us to chain 79. Of course, you will need to make two. I was just informed by my brother that what i just showed you guys how to do with the cotton thread is called improving the tensile strength of the strand so we are improving our tensile strength so see we're all learning something from a mr smarty pants today <laughs> so just an fyi i have reached my 79 and in the this is not the FYI. The FYI is gonna come, I, you know, I'm one of those people who speaks now and then thinks later. So before the FYI, let's start working single crochets into every stitch in our starting in our second chain from the hook. Just one single crochet into every stitch until the last stitch. So FYI, my brother Roger was in upholster and interior designer and now what he does for a living is solders glass the size of human hair together to make sure that we can keep our internet connections. <laughs> he works in uh, on servers for major corporations. So that's who let us all know that what, I, what I'm doing here is improving the tensile strength. Again, reinforcing, oh, excuse me, reinforcing the tensile strength. He said that so quietly. Um, from again, a Mr. Smarty Pants only, I think it's fair to say a bona fide Smarty Pants. If I have to be fair, I will. 
bona fide smarty pants. Okay, one single crochet all the way to the end until the last stitch. Don't work the last stitch. I'll be right back. We've worked all of our stitches, single crochet into every stitch except for our last stitch. And in the last stitch, we work three single crochet all into that same stitch. One, two, and three. Now we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch until the last stitch again. So here we go. Go ahead and weave in, probably go ahead and weave in your um, tail while you're at it. So you're gonna skip over it, see where the knot is, and it looks like this is a stitch right here. It's not your stitch. The one right after it is going to be your stitch. There we go. And there you go. Just start working single crochets into every stitch until the last stitch. I will see you on the other side. Worked our way up to the very last stitch. And once again, in this last stitch, let's work three single crochet. And it won't be lopsided, it will work itself out. Two, and then one more, three. Now into the first stitch that you made right here, work a slip stitch, chain one, and single crochet. And work one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the three that you worked on the end. These three right here, one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Don't work into those yet, just work up to this point right here and you'll see them because they're the only three kind of hanging out on the end up there. All right, I will be right back. Again, this is just one single crochet and you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and mark my very first stitch. This is the last row of the handle, but it will still be easier for me to know where to slip stitch into if I can see it. Okay, so one single crochet every stitch until almost the end and I will be right back. There we go. Okay, I've got one stitch left before my three on the end, so I'll work my last single crochet here. Now, in each one of these three stitches, we're gonna work two single crochet into each one. That's one, two, next one over, one, two, and then the third one, one and two for a total of six on the end. Now we're gonna work our way down single crochet into every stitch. And when you get to the other end and you see here we have our three stitches on the end, right here, one, two, three, they are kind of coming off to the side, but whenever you slip stitch over here, everything will come, will line up normal. So you'll work two single crochet into each, not that one right up here. You'll work two single crochet into each of your last three stitches and then slip stitch into your very first single crochet cut and leave a long tail for sewing. Of course, we'll have to, we will have to go ahead and join yarn. I probably, I didn't think. I should have said to start off with a very long tail, but I didn't, I wasn't thinking. I was too, I was more concerned with explaining about the thread. <laughs> so my bad, we will have to join a yarn to sew in this end, but if we cut and leave a really long tail, we can use that tail for sewing in the end. So, okay. Let's go ahead and work our way all the way down to the other end. Okay, here we are at the end. And we're gonna go one, two, next, next stitch over, three, then the last stitch, five and six. There we go. And then slip stitch into the starting single crochet. And there we go. Cut a long tail. And what I'll do is I'll weave in the thread. I'll cut a short thread, weave that in because I'm only gonna do sewing with the yarn. 
So I'll just separate these two and I'll cut about that much right there. And I'll go ahead and weave this bit in and then use this for sewing it to the side of the bag. Okay. Okay, so my, I already, it says at this point when we're done making the handles to go ahead and attach the zipper portion onto both sides. So I have done that, but I don't sew as we all know. And I didn't wanna do this on camera because the last time I did this on camera, I had the fingers wagging at me and people literally said the words shame. So, or the word shame. So I opted to do this portion off camera, but I'm not gonna be dishonest. I don't know how to sew. I did try to sew it on and it became so frustrating. I thought to myself, what am I doing? So I just went with my old tactic and I glued, hot glued my zipper on. I'm just gonna keep it real, that's who I am. I don't know how to sew, I, I use hot glue. So mine is hot glued on there and I mean to tell you, it's okay, it's, she's on there. So, so that's just me, completely transparent. I'm not gonna show, I didn't wanna show how I did it because last time I showed me applying hot glue to crochet, the comments bothered me a little bit. So I opted to not do that. So now we're going to move on to the portion where we need to attach, not the handles yet. We have to attach the sides first and then we will do the handles last. I already attached one side. Like I said, these sides seem like they are way too small for this bag, but it all works out in the end. And whenever you see the reveal shots at the end where it's not way close to the camera like this, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so how we attach, I always start at the bottom because that's where I want my starting little knot to be. So I'm gonna start at the bottom here and you can just attach any old way, any old stitch that you want. Does not have to be anything specific, just there to there, that works. And it says to do a single crochet, but I really like the way it looked in the picture with this great big lip coming out. So I opted to go for half double crochet. So you can do a single crochet if you want to, play around with it and see how you like that. But I opted to go for half double crochet. So that's the way I'm gonna show it on camera, just changing it up just a little bit. So I'm gonna start with a half double crochet right where I joined my yarn. And I'm just gonna work one half double crochet and the stitches should match up stitch for stitch. So just one half double crochet into every stitch all the way around and you will make it work because there are equal numbers of stitches or there should be an equal number of stitches, 79 stitches around the body, I'm sorry, 78 stitches around the body and 78 stitches around the ring. So it should match stitch for stitch. Okay, here we go. One half double crochet into all of the stitches all the way around. I will be right back. There we go. Be right back. Okay, so as far as the handles go, and again, this orange might really stress my camera out, but you'll just come down. I really didn't even measure it, so I guess I could do that with you here. I just eyeballed it. Um, let's see here. From the edge, looks like I came down about five and a half inches. And so I'll match that on the other side over here and again on the other side, but I'm just kind of going through the stitches like this and I'll go a little ways up here we go then I'll just come back up through make sure I try to keep it lined up nope yep there we go and I think that's enough so what I'll do now is just because I started down here so I've stitched my way all the way up so now I'll just come over to the side and come back through, come down over here, and then work my way back down. There we go. Okay, so just do this with all four of your handle ends. And then I will be right back 
with some reveal shots because we are done. Also, I wanted to point out one more quick little thing. The type of zipper that I bought doesn't have any stoppers on the end. So what I did is crisscrossed the ends to prevent it from flying off. See how I have the ends crisscrossed like that? And that is just how I am preventing it from, see? Oops, right there. Just to, to court, sort of create a stopper. There we go. All right, so sew in your handles and come on back and I'll show you some reveal shots. well I had a lot of fun making this and I actually want to make another one I want to make it with blue purple and this turquoise color I'm not sure what I want to do in the middle but I do want to make another one I also want to use this um, like neon yellowy green color I want to make another one of these so let me know what you guys think it is very 80s it's it's a duffel bag y'all it's a duffel bag what do you think okay I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.